Welcome to week 12, Breaking the Fourth Wall. As always, I am your host, Junior Ruiz, alongside a special co-host today, David Bloomquist Jr., who is a fan of Comics Remix and also vice president of ClassicLoo.com. David, thank you for being on the show with me today. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate you uh, hanging out with me and shit. Um, David is also a buddy of mine. We've been friends for about two years now. And we trade toys. He's one of my... Uh, I shouldn't even tell people that you're one of my key guys, but, you know, whatever. I'm honest like that. No scalping here. Um, sadly, though, David Sanchez, my co-host of the Comics Remix uh, and the whole guy who helped me start the whole thing, is no longer with the show or the company. David, for those that don't know, is a graphic designer, and he got recently a promotion at his job. And the job obviously takes precedence over this, you know, family first. So, David, we wish you great luck, man. You're going to do great. We love you. Thank you for making, helping make Comics Remixed what it has become so far. We're going to miss you. So with that being said, for the next uh, few weeks, co-hosts galore. So if you've ever wanted to be on the show and hang out with me and come kick it, now's the time. So Dave, again, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Luce, you feel good? Yes, I feel good. All right. All right, well, let's just get into it. Uh, Ant-Man. Marvel's Ant-Man movie that they've got planned for 2015, dude. So Edgar Wright is out of the door. Okay. Oh, yeah. And in his place now, they've got Peyton Reed directing. Now, Peyton Reed is known for doing non-action movies. Bring, uh, what's the fucking, bring the fight, what's the thing? Bring it on. Bring it on. The That's cheerleader the, the cheerleader flick from 2000. Yeah. is like his biggest film to date. Right. What does I, that say? You, your biggest film to date is a cheerleader <laughs> comedy. But you are supposed to direct. What should Ant-Man. be an action, what should be an action movie. Totally. And, you know, with and Marvel being on the role that they are, cinematic, like, are you nervous for this? Does this make you nervous? It it does make me nervous because it sounds like they're it, they're going to make a comedy of it. Like, mm-hmm. Ben Stiller did the Starsky and Hutch. Oh, wow. What a, That's a good... Wow, I didn't think of that. Um, I I liked... The only thing I liked about that movie was the Torino. Yeah, was, it's was, like everybody's favorite it, they, car. It, my car. That was one of my dream cars as a kid. And I think if Snoop could have <laughs> legally changed his name from Snoop to Sugar Bear or Huggy Bear, Huggy, Huggy Bear, Huggy Bear yeah. he probably would have. If, yes. You know, he was good as Huggy Bear. I, he, I liked him as Huggy Bear, but the rest of it, oh god. So with that being said, now, like I said, does this make you nervous? Yes, it okay. does. Especially um, with the announcement that Adam McKay is doing rewrites to the script. Okay, um, not too. Adam McKay, we got the info here. Is how we roll. Um, blah, 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 blah. She's done. He's doing script rewrites. Uh, Wright was the primary writer with Joe Cornish on the earlier version. And reportedly left the project due to suggested rewrites from Marvel. But um, doesn't say what the hell uh, yeah. McKay has been doing. Oh, that even that's even worse. In yeah. My opinion. You know, it sounds like they got a no name doing rewrites. Obviously, he's got a name, it, but... He's got, yeah, but, but nothing... According to Newsarama, he doesn't. No, bullshit. Here it is. Um, McKay is most well-known for the Anchorman films, in which Paul Rudd, starring in Ant-Man as Scott Lang, also starred. Which Anchorland, and Anchorman was a comedy. Comedy. So... I'm, uh, this makes me really nervous. It makes me nervous as much as the Fantastic Four movie. Oh, that doesn't make me nervous. I just don't want to watch that. Yeah, that one, yeah. Well, that's a whole different subject. That we're about to get into. <laughs> so, since actually, since you brought that up... Bleeding Cool, as much as we don't like giving them credit for whatever reason. Um, Rich Johnston has announced, or he's reporting, that Marvel is pulling the plug on the Fantastic Four comic books because they don't want to help advertise the movie. Yeah. Did you hear about that? Oh, yeah. What did you think? What was that? I was like, oh, God, there goes one of my most favorite books around, but I can see where they're coming from because they don't want to be associated with this movie. Right. And they're afraid it's going to hurt probably sales yeah. of the Fantastic Four. But again, here we are. Will they, once the movie's out, and in my opinion, I think it's going to bomb. I, I, in everybody's opinion. Um, it's, you know, are, when they bring the Fantastic Four back, are they going to start off where they left off number wise? Or are we looking at another number one again? Which, well, see, I, I, I didn't. Read that they're gonna be like canceled complete, like on hiatus. Okay, hiatus. Okay, but and, with, with the whole you know the rumor that they're gonna relaunch the company or mm-hmm. whatever, who knows? Maybe, yeah. You know, 
We don't know that for sure, but what we do know is that artists were given specific instructions not to use the Fantastic Four characters in upcoming projects, such as the Marvel 75th anniversary poster, who they, the characters have been left off the poster, as well as the uh, trading cards. You know, like the Marvel Universe yeah, trading cards that are done by Upper Deck Rittenhouse? Yeah. Uh, the art, there's a memo that went out to some of the artists saying, you know, that you can't use this character, or you can't use that character. If you want to use somebody so here, uh, well, um, an artist, this is Rich Johnston talking, an artist who I have been asked not to name told me, I do a number of sketch card projects for Upper Deck and Rittenhouse using Marvel characters. The most recent projects from both companies, one build is a Marvel 75th anniversary, gave specific guidelines to not use any FF characters or supporting cast such as Doctor Doom, Galactus, the Surfer, and etc. So, what do we think? Uh, another source close to Marvel tells me that this is coming from Marvel CEO and largest Disney shareholder, Ike Perlmutter, who has been known to take these kind of things very personally. Uh, also, it's worth pointing out that Marvel has a different relationship with Fox than it does with Sony. Okay. Which I think is kind of weird. Okay, you know, like with Marvel, like when they did Captain America Winter Soldier, and when they did um, any of their Marvel movies, like Avengers, Iron Man, they plaster that shit all, all over, over the, the comics. Yeah. Especially with the X-Men Days of Future Past being as great as it was, they still didn't advertise it. But and they didn't pull the plug. Much. Yeah. And not at all. Like, on the Marvel comics, not at all. No? No. Okay. You know, like on the cover, it'll usually have like a banner right. saying in, in theaters, and then you see the rest of in the cover. The, in, in the back page or something, yeah. you know, like with, a po picture of the poster. Yeah, they didn't yeah. do it at all with Future Past. I was like, wow, but they That's did it with, uh, if you notice, they did it with Spider-Man. They had these, yes, like, the did. toothbrush ads and stuff yeah. like that. Um, well, it's all, The like, Happy Meals. Yeah. Um, the, the Hasbro toy line. Yeah. <laughs> so it says, it's also worth pointing out that Marvel is a very different relationship with Fox than it does with Sony, as I just said. It says, uh, another artist, here, from another artist, here comes the instruction sheet received by sketch card artists. It says, dear artist, below is a few additional instructions to add to your sketch card guidelines. All Marvel characters related to Fantastic Four are now off limits and will be immediately rejected by Marvel. This includes, but not limited to, Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Woman, Human Torch, The Thing, Doctor Doom, Galactus, Silver Surfer, The Watcher, Scrolls, etc. Any derivative, if in doubt, please draw something else. The Watcher and they got original Sin going. That's more of a Marvel event, though. Yeah. But, unfortunately, the um, he is associated, associated with, with the Fantastic Four than more with any other exactly person in the Marvel Universe. So do you think this is wise for Marvel? What do you think like the end game plan is for this? Okay, we're not going to help you promote the movie. It, it, I think it's going to hurt Fox. Of course. Big time. Well, um, see here, because, not... because, like I said, they didn't promote X Men. Yeah. But like, then again, they didn't stop the X Men comics. Right. Um, but this one, with this, Fox is taking the liberties of really changing a lot of the characters. That, in my opinion, being a fan of the Fantastic Four, as long as I have, you don't, you know, it's like Marvel's first family. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't want to change them. Yeah. Fans don't want to see the change. You know, they may be trying to change it for the times, but you still... There's just uh, it's, subtle changes you can get away with. Right. Like the way Sony handles Spider-Man with Amazing Spider-Man. You know, it's more modern. Peter's a yeah. skateboarder. But he, it's just... The biggest change, obviously, is Michael B. Jordan being cast as Human Torch. People yeah. are just like, why? Yeah, you exactly. Know? Doesn't matter if the guy's a great actor. I mean, in some instances, I guess it could be acceptable the way they did uh, Michael Clark Duncan for Kingpin in the Daredevil movie. Yeah. It was okay. You know, Michael Clark Duncan was a great performer anyway. But like I said, in some instances, it can change. You know, obviously Fury for, um, excuse me, Sam Jackson for Fury. Right. But they, they also gearing, introduced that in the comic right, little by they were, little. They were gearing that one, in my opinion, towards more of the ultimate universe. Yeah. Nick Fury than mm -hmm. the Marvel mainstay universe. So do you think that because of them stopping the FF and Marvel really, I guess in a sense, boycotting the movie... That Fox is just gonna go like, okay, we totally lost money on this movie. Marvel, you can have the rights back. I think that's what Marvel's end game is. I, I would like to see Marvel get it back. I'd like to see Marvel get all their properties back. It, yeah, and then that he can actually do what I would like to see some crossover movies. Mm -hmm. Seeing maybe Spider Man join the Avengers. Well, see, that's with Sony. 
And there's always rumors that Peter's right. going to appear in Avengers 3. Yeah. Not 2, but 3. They have a good working relationship. And if Sony and Fox, for that matter, if they were smart, they would see that the money that Disney and Marvel's pulling in and say, you know what, let's go half on these movies. You know, you right. guys put them out, we'll distribute them or something. Exactly. Win-win. Yeah, they, in my opinion. I think it's ego. I think it comes down to ego. Yeah, Fox is probably just trying to do it. Okay, let's see if we can um, do what Marvel's doing. Right. Make out a good movie, a good Marvel character movie. But if I, they're going to do what they did here, I I don't even see that happening. Right. You know, going back to Ant-Man real quick, I think it's going to be a good movie. The problem with it, though, is it's going to be funny. We're gonna be like, Man, that was a great, funny movie wasn't supposed to be that way. Right. You know, we'll like it for what it is. Especially for, but, S- sorry, but especially for Scott Lang. Yeah. Scott Lang was a hero. You know, he gave his life for the Avengers, gave up his life. You know, in the last book I read, I'm about five years behind, guys. <laughs> um, Slacker. So I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not current on, all, on Slacker. all things happening in the Marvel Universe so much. I have some ideas of what's going on, but not completely. But... You know, to me, Scott Lane had that little bit of comedic to him. A little bit. Right, but here's the thing. They're also casting Michael Clark Duncan. Or excuse me, Michael Clark Duncan. Um, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas as uh, Henry Penn. Right. So, Michael Douglas is not, not a comedy, a comedy com- right. uh, actor. So, maybe they're going to use that for the balance? I, I, don't I uh, Let's then put it this way. Then I'll hold my opinion until the movie comes out. That's what we should do with all of them. You know? um, I mean, as fans, we can speculate all we want, but at the end of the day, none of us know squat until we see right. the movie. You know, they, they did the same thing, you know, when they announced uh, Michael Keaton as Batman. The first thing that popped into my mind Damn. back then was like, really? Mr. Mom? Yeah. Come on. But after I saw the first one, the first Batman, I was like, "Yeah, okay, this is good. Yeah. And I, I did like the second one, and that's my... Where Shut I, your face! <laughs> kids outside being stupid. <laughs> but um, the rest of the, those Batman movies, man, that's... That, those were just... Batman just Returns that. was all right. That's the Val Kilmer one, wasn't it? Returns was uh, Keaton's, though. That's the one no, that, Keaton was Returns, yeah, yeah, with the Penguin. Yeah, after that. Yeah, was, after that. Yeah, after that, it's just like... No, you God. just can't find a good place to get rid of a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the good old Adam West Batman. So moving on in our last little bit of uh, news here, we go from big screen to the small screen. Booyakasha News Facebook page uh, shared a photo of a fan who recently wrote to Playmates Toys asking for some release dates on certain action figures, such as Razar, um, if we're going to see a second version of April, uh, when we're going to see a Karai figure, and stuff like that. So Lisa from Playmates Toys responded, saying that Razar is coming out this fall because you know they got the turtle movie stuff coming out so it's still kind of in the mix um we're not going to get a second version of april so for the turtle fans out there if you guys have still on the fence you have decided whether you want to pick april up or not get her because out of 24 she's still one in 24 case um a revision cases playmates is good with constantly ship reshipping stuff but in it takes time you know so like april's out now you might not get another april to the end of the year so get her while you can find her. Um, but the biggest takeaway from this letter was saying that there's a mutated Karai figure coming in, and uh, but there's no release date. So a lot of, there's a lot of talk on the Facebook page. I was reading their comments, and uh, a lot of people seem to think it's that she's going to mutate into Venus, the fifth turtle from the horrible Next Mutation series. I pray to God that that does not happen. I mean, unless they make her an all-new mutant. See, and there's another... There, you, you don't read... No, you don't fucking read. You're behind on your comics. Yeah. Um, in, the tur- cur- tur- in the current Turtles book... Plus, I don't there's read a the mutant, Turtles. You should. There's a mutant out there uh, named Alapex. It's a female oh, yeah. wolf. So they're like, well, maybe... And she's with the foot clan. So like, maybe that's who Karai turns into. You know? Or maybe she just turns into somebody all brand new. Regardless, I'm curious, but it, it's like a possible spoiler. You know? Right. Like, why are we getting a mutated... Karai in the, in the 2003 series because I know you really you're not on your turtle shit. Karai was Shredder's granddaughter, adopted granddaughter. Okay. You know, so she was loyal to the Foot Clan and everything. In the current series, she's his adopted daughter. Okay. Or she calls him father. She really thinks he's her father. Um, 
but in truth, and she just recently learned at the beginning of the second season, she's actually Splinter's daughter. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. The Turtles, last episode I watched, don't know that Karai knows now. The Turtles know, um, because Splinter has a picture of him, his, uh, his wife, and their newborn before the wife and the newborn died. Um, it turns out the newborn didn't die. Shredder took her and raised them as their own. Uh, so Typical bad guy. Yeah. So when Splinter decided to break the news to the Turtles, now they're like looking at Cry a little bit differently. They're kind of holding back their punches, you know, but Cry doesn't know. They tried telling her. She didn't want to hear it. After the match and the, with the foot, and they all leave. The Turtles are still kind of like catching their breath on the rooftop. And they're talking about, well, do you think she'll ever come to our side? And Splinter's saying, you know, well, leave her when she's ready. She'll come if she's ready, blah, blah, blah. Not knowing the cry is still on the rooftop, eavesdropping. And that's when she realizes, damn, they were telling me the truth. So I haven't watched the second se- all of the second season yet, so I don't know how much farther they've gone into it with that. But regardless, I think it's an issue. interesting twist. And the fact that Playmates Toys has announced that, announced that they're going to go ahead and have a mutated cry just piques my interest even more. So I should add that to your must-get list? No. Because <laughs> I'll get all those. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, that's what we got. We got the Ant-Man stuff. Comedy? I think it's going to be a joke. Yeah, I think so, too. Ha, ah, I see what I did there. I, yes. <laughs> uh, Marvel pulling the plug on the Fantastic Four stuff. We want nothing to do with you, Fox. You suck. Thoughts on that? Oh, God. Uh, yep. That, I'm right. gonna, I'm gonna, gonna sums it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that would if it goes into my Marvel collection of movies because I've I've got everything, even mm-hmm. Ghost Rider, Spirits of Vengeance, but I didn't get that until it showed up in sure. the 788 bin at Walmart. Sure. <laughs> That's where I wind up buying the Fox Fantastic Four. Wow. No, it, it, seriously, I waited. I saw the Spirits of Vengeance in the theater. Now, here's the thing: like, Are you gonna go watch Fantastic Four? I'm saying no, but I got this. You will. I know I probably will. I, as and much as I bash it, I'm going to have to I, go watch it anyway so I can tell you guys how awful it is. Yes. What if it's like the most mind-blowing movie since Avengers? I don't see that happening. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, nothing, I, I'm sorry, no, I don't think anything can surpass Avengers. Maybe Avengers, Avengers 2. Well, like. Avengers two, <laughs> yes, Age of Ultron. I think that will surp- that will surpass Avengers, but it's you know Avengers is a whole different take. You know, it just brings everybody. It's a, it's from, a pure superhero movie, and and it's all action from beginning to end, just like Winter Soldier was action that from was beginning great. to end. I I did not leave my seat, and you know when you gotta go, you gotta go, but. I stayed. You better drink that pop and use the cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> use your pop. Drain that cup real quick and use that as, as yes. So there we go. <laughs> Dave, take a moment and tell people where uh, if they want to be friends with you, where they can find you. and They can find me on Facebook. Just look for David A. Lundquist Jr. Um, check, us, check out our Facebook page for Classic Glue. The site is still under development. Uh, you can't get on to the site at ClassicGlue.com. Now wait, for those that don't know what Classic Glue is, give me a quick recap of what Classic Glue is. Classic Glue is a take of an uh, old site called Gag Glue where you checked into TV shows, movies, books, uh, video games, Facebook games, uh, miscellaneous topics, anything you can think of. Um, say, like Culver's, like I like Culver's. Um... <laughs> Don't shake your head. Uh, but you you can chat with people who like the same shows. So okay. say if you wanted to go on there and just you know do Teenage Mutant Ninja I knew Turtles, you were gonna say that. <laughs> um, you you you'd be chatting with other people who love the turtles as right. much as you do. I have actually. So it's kind of like it sounds like it's a hub for all the like um, the forums based off those specific topics. It's just one big hub for it. Right, and it's just we're not just in the U.S. We have people liking us from the U.K., uh, Australia, Brazil. There's a Facebook page dedicated to Classic Glue. Dedicated. And, yeah, <laughs> dedicated to Classic Glue in Brazil. Nice. Um, which at last I heard was... Brazilian fans, get a Comic Stream Mix Facebook page going out there. Let's go. <laughs> Where it's probably like 
almost 300 likes okay, on their cool. page. Our, our Facebook page is almost 850. So technically you can say we're almost a thousand oh, yeah. followers cool. uh, between the two. But you know, you're going to be able to get stickers. Ooh. Hey. Because we all like stickers. Yeah. They're free. Oh, okay. Yeah. We like they're, free. They're free. Um, once you unlock 20 stickers, you'll be able to have them mailed to your home. Well, STDs are free when nobody likes to get nose. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, that's okay. But what we're offering, too, is you'll be able to unlock, order the ones <laughs> specifically you want to order first. The stickers. The stickers. Okay. Get glue, hand that. But we're going to go one step further than they did and highlight, say you order a sticker and you had it shipped, and next time you want to order from that series again, and you're not sure which ones you've ordered already. So like a checklist. It'll have it faded out or okay. you know, something okay. that'll tell you that you've ordered it already. Cool. Which Get Glue didn't. That was a pain in the butt, especially when I'm trying to do the whole Walking Dead stickers. You know, it's just like, I got to break out my last sheet that I got from them. Gotcha. And see, you know, and scroll through and then go up to and order my next 20. Gotcha. And there are a lot of people who didn't get a lot of their stickers. But we're also going to give you the option also to order extras if you want. But for a small fee. Gotcha. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing the classic glue T-shirt, which I ordered at Zazzle.com. <laughs> Got to put it out there. Um, I'm wearing a Deadpool T-shirt. Hey, they probably could design a Deadpool T-shirt for you. They'll Wouldn't design. That be like copyright infringement. All right. Well, I don't know. Well, all right. So for more info, everything, go to classicglue.com. Go on Facebook, look for David A. Bloomquist Jr. Chit chat with him. He's also on the action figure trading and sharing page. Go check that out. David's got some cool stuff to trade with you. If not, you guys can figure something out. <laughs> hey, that's what it is. So for another episode of Comics Remix, oh, breaking the fourth wall, <laughs> presented by Comics Remix. Um, by the way, as always, check out everything at comicsremix.com, the hub for. Yes, watch them. Thank you. The hub for the spinner rack, collector's corner. Lock up and everything else we do. So, comicsremix.com, check it out, classicglue.com. Till next week, where Dave will join me again. I'm Junior Ruiz, saying good night. Thanks, guys. Night. <laughs>